maybe talk a little yeah. bit about what you feel as as being an adjuster for almost 10 years, the number one thing, right? All other things being equal, the number one thing that mo has moved the needle for you the most in being as successful as you have been. Um, so usually when I tell people uh, my story of kind of how I came up with things, it's kind of always pushed management on a, hey, I wish people could do things that way. Um, I learned underneath somebody as like a ladder assist position. Um, I did that for six months and then obtained my steep and uh, high, uh, steep and tall certification. Uh, from there, I actually went to go learn the backside of claims. So I went and I didn't really want to do the whole in office thing. Uh, obviously, at that time, that was there was cubicles. Now, sometimes it's remote, sometimes it's not right. Yeah. Um, but I went and did 10 months of uh, reconciliation on the backside of claims. So nice. first learning the front side, then I did 10 months of the backside um, from. So I got to see, like, what all comes to on the back side that we may be able to address in the front side, right? Um, you'll, you learn over time, like how many adjusters left food on the table, right? Um, and what can you do to prevent you missing out on money, which also accounts, um, to potentially a different tier in your pay. Um, wow. so that was 10 months. I got to do that from there. I went back to another, uh, company and I actually did, um, water claims, as ownership at the desk as well for another six to eight months. So field for like wind and hail to the backside of the hail to then the wa the front side of the water. And then from there, I got into the field working, you know, by myself. Um, so that's the biggest thing. It's just kind of understanding the process of things. You may just be, um, you may want to be a desk adjuster or you may want to be a field adjuster, but if you don't understand the process of things, then it's really hindering what you can do for an insured. Um, a good example is I looked at a house um, on Saturday. Um, and because I know the knowledge of the backside, I understood that the way that her basement was set up is that she didn't have proper exterior doors. Um, stairs going to the exterior off like the storm door. Um, and then unconfined spaces that are considered um, non-insulated uh, or non-heated spaces that would require exterior doors to be up to code. Now, I didn't, of course, make this aware to the homeowner because that's not my job in my position currently, but I did make it aware in my narrative report that, hey, be aware that if they do have building code coverage or if they have certain things here, just be aware if they supplement for these things because that's things that the desk adjuster may not know based upon their area that that I'm working in because yeah. sometimes those desk adjusters cover multiple states. So it's just good little things. Um, being able to go back and forth and be versatile uh, allows you to have a lot more knowledge um, in what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, for sure. So so it sounds like you were kind of taking your, your head in your mind that you're going to play the long game, right? So mm -hmm. maybe you're like, I really want to do field, but I know that to start, you know, I'm going to take what I can get. And maybe you didn't, you weren't consciously thinking, or maybe you were at the very beginning. You're like, well, I want to do, if I, if I work, you know, go sit in a cubicle or if I do something remotely or whatever, that's going to backfill and give me a whole other dimension of skills and knowledge that I can then apply to field. Um, maybe you knew that, did you know that or would you, was you, you just took what you can get? Um, I'm very open-minded, so my my biggest question to other adjusters was if you could redo things, how would yeah. you do it? Or you know, so your what mentor biggest... was like, yeah, but I was open. I was opening to listen to anybody, you know. Um, sure. And the, that's the best part, right? So, being that I went from the my uh, ladder assist, I learned so much from him, and he had had management roles too. But once I went into the office. Then it was, I have 20 people around me who I can ask these questions to and not be in the stuck position of what do I do next? So yeah. there's, and, and then from there, those are all connections that I made to, I'll be driving down the street now and, you know, oh, this random person will pop in my head I worked with in 2017 and I'll just call them and see how they're doing and where they're at and what they're doing. And it may set up a connection for once I leave what I'm doing here. 
Yeah. So networking too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Picking up the phone, making stuff happen. Picking up the phone yeah. by itself. True or false? Just picking up the phone and saying, you know what? I haven't talked to this guy for a while. Maybe I'll just give him a buzz. How often does that make make things happen for you? I my ritual to myself is every month I'm following up with at least four to five contacts from the yeah. past. Um, this past year, I did some uh, some training myself for other guys, so I obviously touch base with them. Um, there's guys who were teachers before they learned that I went and did one-on-one training with them just to make sure they got up to speed. And um, so some of it's like, hey, where are you at? Do you need any help with anything? Um, but yeah, the other half is um, I reached out to a guy the other day and he was like, hey, man, once you leave there, I'm now in a management role. Once you leave there, let me know and I'll see what we can get you plugged into. So yeah. it, it's uh, it's so crazy. I took networking seriously and getting it more on LinkedIn and things about three years ago. Um, even to the point that I had firm managers letting me know, Hey, um, we see what you're doing on LinkedIn and who you're touching base with and the communication you're having. So just be aware of that. Even though I wasn't really working for some of them, um, those connections made me aware that, Hey, my name is getting passed around, uh, an aspect, even though they didn't have work for me at that. If you're a brand new adjuster working for a major IA firm, you will most likely already be covered under a blanket errors and emissions policy. You probably already pay something like five or ten dollars per claim for this coverage. And what is errors and emissions? Well, if you're accused of messing something up on a claim, your E and O insurance will step in and help you out. But what if you cause damage or injury on a field inspection? For example, your ladder falls down and smashes the insured's brand new Ford F-150 Lightning then a general liability policy will cover you in that instance. Again, you likely have a little bit of protection through your IA firm as a newbie adjuster. However, if you've got a year or two under your belt and you make most or all of your annual income from claims work, then you owe it to yourself to upgrade your e and general liability coverages to be customized to you. And depending on how many claims you run in a year, there's a very good chance these policies will be cheaper for you with your own coverages. Better and cheaper? Sign me up. There's only one company that provides E&O and general liability solely to the insurance industry, and that is CPLIC, aka Kaplik. They even have drone and cyber coverages. Download the free guide all about the different kinds of insurance you as the adjuster should carry at cplic.net slash adjuster TV. And with more than 700 videos, there's plenty more to watch here on Adjuster TV. Don't know where to start? Just go to my videos page here on YouTube and type in a search term right here to find an answer to almost any question you have about property claims handling. And we'll see you in the next one.